Well, I think having the programs really helps me. It's very structured and I like get a little obsessive about like, you know, I like to start a program on a Monday. I like to finish up by a Friday. So I start thinking about timelines in my head. Well, if I skip it today, why am I skipping it? Is it because my body really needs rest or is it just because I really don't feel like doing it? I felt like that a lot during go big or go home. Like I had to like talk myself into it, like get over there and just get it done. And like, every, it was always about getting it done because then I'm one workout away, like one workout closer to being done. So that's how I motivate myself. Time to hit the gym, better do it smart. Get your own coach, there where you are. Start the day right, there in your home. With the smartest gym in the world, ready, set, go. Smart handle, smart bar, smart training, there you are. Customizing it right, AI, form and fly. Super set will show you what it's all about. Welcome to the Superset, episode 11. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. This is our Spinal Tap episode, because it goes to 11. <laughs> goes to 11? That's how that works. So does that mean we stop now? No. Because you said it goes to, indicating it is final. It has gone to 11. Okay. So but it's then not the... we will be one better than Spinal Tap, because we'll go to 12. Okay. That's Whew. how that works, I think. Okay. Okay. I was just checking. Yeah. So, uh, well, what 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 do you got in store for people? Well, um, there is about a billion new features on Tonal. They are adding things like crazy. Yeah. So we're going to talk about all of that, and uh, then you know some some other stuff. Some other stuff. <laughs> Way to keep them on the edge of their seat. Some other stuff. Uh, no, for real. There's uh, not only new features, but there's there's new. Uh, class types there's some stuff about um, there are some topics that came up during the recent tonal talk that I thought would be fun to talk about now okay um, so all of that okay well before we get to all that shameless plugs don't forget we're available on Apple podcast Spotify Google podcast wherever you find a podcast you can find us while you're there be sure and subscribe so you never miss an episode uh, and of course uh, wherever you're getting your podcast from maybe leave us a review so people that would be nice that come along behind you uh, know that uh, it's worth a listen yeah and i know uh some people have left us uh feedback and just so you guys know when we say leave a review if you could leave it on the podcast um platform that you're listening to so if you get your podcast through apple for example please leave it on apple music um that is kind of having reviews is one way that they figure out that like people are actually listening and right. and that's a good way for them to push us closer to more people so that that's how we grow so Absolutely. that is why we're asking for that so yeah so uh and then um also if you want to stay up to date on tonal and and the podcast uh, in between episodes the best way to do that is to check us out on facebook facebook.com slash super set podcast there's a page and a group so uh like the page and join the group and you'll be all up to date you, you won't will. have to wait yeah so uh there's all that let's uh let's dig in shall we we shall well i gotta say i really like this new tweak so nor there used to be six goals yeah on your tonal uh-huh. and now there are three goals and why do you like that i'm just a big fan of them having fewer goals <laughs> to deal with <laughs> on any level anytime there's like hey shoot for these six th- you know what make it three things <laughs> sold i like that <laughs> i'm pretty sure um there's a secret fourth goal called make tom exercise That's in any way shape or form no, nobody has that goal <laughs> i do that's a hyper specific goal that's nobody's thinking that oh, you never know tom but uh I think that this is very helpful to people who are brand new to weight training in general um, and also new to tonal. So before, for anybody who's listening to this and you're not sure what we're talking about, there were there were six different goals. And um, when you when you turn on your tonal for the first time, you're asked to choose a goal. You can change them anytime, but you were asked actually to choose two goals. Now you only need to choose one. So, for example, mine was like uh, get lean, but also get stronger okay and so um now 
it's like I can get lean. I have my choices are going to be get lean, build muscle or improve fitness. And so they kind of talk through a little bit of what each of those are. I, I think this simplifies things is my yeah, point. Yeah, totally. Um, because before it was like get lean and then there was a, like fat loss or something. It was it was two very similar sounding things, um, at least for the building the muscles. And so this will help simplify it for people who are brand new, like I said, to, to weight training or to tonal. Um, so the first one is get lean. And so what that's going to do is focus on calorie burning. So you might see more cardio okay. or not even necessarily more cardio, but the moves that you're going to be doing might be intense enough to get your heart rate up. That's not a tradition. Like you're not going to be doing necessarily jumping jacks. You might just be getting your heart rate up by doing a, a move that's really difficult on the on the tonal. You're going to get sweaty. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for example, okay. the reverse goblet lunges like <laughs> Ooh. I know that the reverse goblet lunges uh. are bad, and here's how I know: when I do something that upsets her, she calls me that. <laughs> She's like, "You no good reverse goblet lunge." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, those are." That's when I know I'm really in trouble. That's like when your mom used to say your middle name. <laughs> if she calls me a reverse goblet lunge, I like. I Clear get out. back. I get back in line. <laughs> Too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah my heart gets a pumping with the uh the reverse goblet lunge but it's still a strength exercise that's my point yeah uh then you have build muscle which is going to be all about increasing muscle mass so that's getting your muscles to be bigger or okay. another word for it is hy- hyper hypertrophy Ooh, fancy hypertrophy. yes fancy yes I've been learning things. I see that. Uh, and then you have another one that is called improve fitness. And so this is going to be a balanced approach to improving your strength, your balance, flexibility, everyday functional functionality. So things like getting the gro- lifting the groceries out of the car. Gotcha. Like that's or or if you wanted to improve on a um, a variety of sports, just in general, right. improve your ability that would be where you'd want to go you know i think it's it's good that they're making these tweaks and i get it's i see that whenever somebody logs in it's gonna ask them again and you know that's probably wouldn't be a bad idea like every six months to a year because i bet you a lot of people forgot what they did that they even did especially when you do it when you're brand new yeah you're gonna get there it's throwing so much stuff at you i bet you people didn't even i bet you there's a good chunk of people that don't remember what they don't even remember selecting a thing i think that's possible especially with um when there were six of them because it's it's a lot to remember when you're first logging in and and if somebody is out there wondering what they set up you don't necessarily even have to go to your trainer you can look on your app on your tonal app it's it, it tells you your goals that you have chosen right there good to know yeah new tonal features So they've added virtual group workouts. Yeah. Okay. So it's really freaking cool. You get to join with up to 10 people at the same time. Okay. And what happens is there's like a waiting room. So you you have a code that everybody logs into and you have this waiting room area. So everybody starts the workout at the same time. So as you're progressing through the workout, you can see if somebody gets a strength PR right. on your team. If somebody, um, if somebody got some other kind of PR, you can see that. And and if you get done with the move before they do, then it's just like just chill out for a second. You can wait mock for, them. You can mock them. Yeah. Now they can't see you. It's oh. not like it's a camera. Well, it's no fun to mock people if they don't see you. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you could mock them. Now you can you can see their reps in real time, and you can share virtual high fives. Interesting. Yes. And I now right now the cameras are not enabled on tonal. Who knows when that will be occurring and when it does occur, who knows if you'll be able to use this feature in tandem. But for those people who want to have an even more social experience while doing this, people have suggested setting up Zoom meetings. They have suggested just doing like a FaceTime kind of thing, right. depending on how many people you have. Yeah. Um, or even just all sharing the same playlist because a lot of people use Apple Music with the tonal. So could you share? Uh, so because I would, could like one person control the playlist for all ten people. I don't think so. Okay, I, I just was so. like. But everybody could choose the same playlist 
if yeah. you know, I assume you can share. I assume you can share playlists on Apple the way you can on Spotify. Since I'm not an Apple girl, I don't know that. So if I just yet. told you something yet, uh, if I don't, if I just told you something that's not true, I'm sorry. It makes sense. So I know Apple Music is supposed to work pretty similar to Spotify. So yeah. that, that stands to reason. Yeah. So um, this is pretty cool. And then if you're not sure, like, how do I get people involved? Um, out on the official Tonal community, they have a tag. Um, that they're using for group workouts group virtual workouts also several people have made posts to say hey i want to try this anybody want to try it with me and there's there's all kinds of different people setting up different times so feel free to just jump right in to the official tonal community to be able to get that it's it's pretty cool i will be um if i don't experience it before then i'll be doing my first one on the 20th i think of october okay so you're gonna get together a little group i didn't get together a group lisa silverstein got together a group and uh she was kind enough to include me it'll be like really late at night for me right it's at 7 p.m which is like really late for me to be doing a workout (laughs) like it's not late in the day for most people right but it is late in the day for me to be doing a workout you're normally in bed by 7 (laughs) 15 it's not too long after that (laughs) you get up at five (laughs) that is true it adds up it does it does uh, it is a really cool feature though I can't wait to use it And I've heard a lot of really good things about it How fun it is And, and how it's just kind of neat to see All the different people pop in and out And even if you arrive late You can still join You'll just like skip past the intro And just hop right into the workout So Tonal has made a, uh, a tweak To some of the Facebook commenting Yeah um, So what they've done is they have They've had a support forum that they have it's it's a completely separate platform right um but whenever it's open to anybody sure. who has tonal so you can go over there and you can ask questions and you can google things like you can search things not use google um you can search <laughs> and you can read people's comments um but what what they've done is out on the uh, official tonal community facebook page they've shut down any comment they're going to disable comments so like if if i were to go on there and be like Oh my god my tonal exploded today That would never happen but right. let's just say <laughs> That it did um, they would be like Okay we're disabling comments and then They would send they'd send me the link to this Tonal support page that gotcha. you're showing on the screen yeah. And they would say go over here um, Now I, I wanted to point this out Because there are people That are feeling like tonal Is not being forthcoming therefore They're shutting things down that's the goal Of this to to be Uh Sh- shady right you know? to like well, don't take bad things on our yeah, yeah and um and you know kate has mentioned several times that people uh throughout the time that she's been with tonal on the face of the original face the official fa- tonal <laughs> easy for you to say i know on the official tonal community they ha- there have been lots of people that have said over the years like please keep this a really positive experience if you're going to have this facebook group right don't let it turn into nothing but complaints and i don't mean that to say people have so many complaints about tonal right. that it turns into that it's i've been around the facebook community enough to know that it it doesn't matter one person says something and it turns into it even if even if it's a completely valid complaint you have one of two things happening um, everybody jumps on them and says, why do you complain? Right. Or two, um, people start giving answers to things that they really don't know totally. anything about. And one also, if you're going to the Facebook community, like you're you're not you're going there to find out things about tonal not right. to hear somebody talk about like hey, my my machine was supposed to get here two hours ago. Where's the delivery guy? Precisely. Like that's, that's also just boring content for for users. I mean, I completely agree. And, you know, I I think it's my least favorite Peloton thing because yeah. over on the official Peloton page, um, it has turned into a complete cesspool. Yeah. And, and, I, and it's just nothing but but bitching. Yeah. And, and and it's the same complaint over again, over and over again, uh, you know, variations on one of four or five things. And then there's a hundred comments and half of them are like, why are you posting this? Yes. As if that's better than the post, like just right. let it go. Right. And it's so, I mean, it's like, it's not even worth going there anymore. No. So, so I prefer personally, I prefer that tonal yeah. does this and I understand their motivation. Why? And also I just want to be very clear that tonal is not 
shutting down the conversation. They are moving the conversation. Yeah. And anybody can go to it. So if, if you know somebody who's new or looking at a tonal and they want to know like what potential problems there are, that's that's what they're trying to look at when they go to the Facebook page. Send them to the support page. There's no reason they can't go over there and look. Like right. go go do the same search, but do it over there. You're still going to see the same issues, but you're going to have it without six million comments that aren't helpful. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I am, for one, glad that they are doing that. Yeah. I and mean, I'm not going to lie. I get why somebody might give that side eye. I get it, too. But That's why I wanted to be really clear about what their motivation is and that they're not shutting it down and removing it. They're moving the conversation to another location. Right. Um, and the, although it's more convenient to have it all in one place on Facebook, also when you have everything in one place, it's icky. Yeah, we've seen it. And the larger they get, the ickier it will it would get if they didn't address stuff like this. True that. <laughs> we were talking about Apple Music a little bit ago, yeah. and their playlist that you can now kind of sync up with your tonal activity. And of course, a lot of people, the next logical question for the non-Apple types out there is but what about spotify absolutely i i would be one of them for now for now you're about (laughs) to go to the dark side yes but i'll still be an android guy you will so everyone can now it can people can choose sides as to who they like better you want to be android or apple yeah Yeah. they'll choose Um, me though you think i do i don't know i think they're gonna choose me (laughs) because i'm the one that's actually working out oh fair enough um (laughs) but yeah what about spotify well here's here's the thing um, Spotify has actually put like a, a kibosh on all fitness integrations for the time being, like a pause. They're not saying they're never going to do it again, yeah. but there is a pause and it's indefinite. Nobody knows when it's going to start up again. Interesting. So Tonal can't integrate Spotify right now. Like it's not an option. Right. Um, I don't know if there's other options out there. I don't know if people even want other options out there, but I do know that if you're a Verizon customer, you can get Apple Music for up to six months for free. And if you've never used Apple Music, you can get Apple Music for three months for free. So there's options out there to at least try it out. And Apple Music now works on non-Apple devices, correct? That's my understanding. Yeah, that I they actually, have an app now that works on both. I think, but I I'm, actually, again, not an Apple person, so I haven't yeah. tried it. So I... I think that that's correct, yeah. but I'm not confident of it. So um, there are people that are super excited about using the Apple Music, but also as a Spotify user, I don't even, yeah, I don't, I can't even imagine creating all those playlists again over there in Apple. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, somebody needs to create an app that pulls them over. Oh my God. But I, um, I think it's interesting that Spotify has completely shut down all fitness integration. And I do wonder if they're like hyper focused on podcasts right now. Oh my God, I know. And I wonder if if that's driving it of just they just don't have, you know, the internal bandwidth to to tackle See, I see it from a completely different standpoint. I see it as there's about a million new machines hitting the market asking them. And I think they're just like, you know what, you guys just do some mergers and then we'll go from there. Let's see who who lasts more than six months. Right. And then especially we'll, in the current environment with so many yeah, things at play, fair. you know, I can totally see that. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea what the actual answer is, but I think I think both of our ideas are valid. <laughs> <laughs> new tonal content. So they have added kickboxing. They have. And bar, which we know is very popular. We do know that. We do. Uh, yeah. So the kickboxing, amazing, because it's all it's like shadow boxing, but yeah. it's it's using your arms and your legs to shadow box. So that's fantastic. Well, I all I know about kickboxing is that it's, it's the, the sport, sport of, of the, the future. future. <laughs> that's what... That's what John Cusack told you. Well, if Lloyd Dobler says it, it must be true. <laughs> God, I love that movie. <laughs> Say anything if you're wondering out there, especially if you're younger and you yes. have no idea what we're talking about. Totally. <laughs> um, and they are also adding kids programs. So for those of you looking on YouTube, that would be what Tom's showing right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, why is he getting attacked by a giraffe? What is happening? You really need kickboxing. You got to because you got to really be good at kicking if you want to get the giraffe right in the throat. Yeah. It's so high. Well, I don't... I mean, their neck is really long. Where does the throat... Is the throat, like, just right oh, at that's the very... Good point. You know? I or think is it even like their legs down? are long. It's still a, it's still a high kick. You okay. still got to be a rocket. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you got family fitness programs. Sorry. Our, we just received a notice from our attorneys, and they just wanted us to say, please don't kick 
cartoon giraffes. Oh yeah, don't kick any giraffes. Yeah, we yeah. don't endorse. No. Or recommend kicking Mm-mm. animated giraffes. Mm-mm. So. Or non-animated yeah. giraffes. I just wanted to get that out there before we got letters. Because <laughs> it's 1973. We're going to get letters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As you were. Are you done? Yeah. Never. <laughs> so not only did they add kickboxing, they added family fitness and they have meditation classes. Um, and then, of course, there is the new bar classes added as well. I'm a little disappointed that they, they did, I didn't get a, a cartoon giraffe doing meditation. I feel like you can do that one in your head. But I wanted to see what they were going to do. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about the bar classes. Personally, um, I I have I really like seeing that Tonal is adding all these different kinds of content yeah. because there's different ways to get strong and that like if you're a person who likes the little dots on your calendar to show you how many days you've been active. Right. It's it's hard to work out like on a program every day. So this gives you so many options to be able to do that. You've you've got Pilates, you've got bar, yeah. you've got meditation. So there really is something for every day, regardless of how you're feeling. If if it's important to you to fill out your calendar, you have so many ways to do that now. Without and overwhelming your body by exactly. pushing it too hard. Exactly. So super exciting. The kickboxing and the bar both just dropped this week. And uh, I think I'm going to try the bar first. I think we need a guest instructor, Lloyd Dobler, for <laughs> kickboxing. <laughs> for kickboxing? Yeah. Oh, reach out to uh, to Lloyd and see what you can do. I'll get right on that. Okay. I think he's living in England. Is he really? With, Di- with uh, Diane Court. Mm. The last time I saw him, they were getting on a plane to England. Yeah. I so mean, it's been a while, it's though. It's been a bit. <laughs> I'm going to say anything, too. God, that was a great movie. No, we don't. You're right. It ended perfectly. It like, just not. leave it alone. Yeah. You don't want to see a 58-year-old Lloyd Dobler. With a boombox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was my overhead squat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Way to bring it back around the tunnel. Well done. Hat tip. <laughs> so there was a uh, recent tonal talk that came out. Yeah, I I just wanted to point this out because um, the tonal talks are always amazing. Yeah, just bar none. Like they just are. But um, this one seems really special to me. It was it was Debbie Mestre. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. She is uh, 67 years old, and she just picked up strength training in her 60s. Wow. I mean, that's that's bold. Yeah. That's really... First of all, it's just... So I still got time. Yeah. So that's what I'm hearing. I think we need to get Debbie on the phone, (laughs) because the last time we talked to somebody who had exercised late in life, like you told them that you would exercise. So maybe if we could get some... I mean, that's not not that far away, Tom. Just because I just turned 50... Now you're being like 60s, not too far away. It's a decade. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, you always say you don't like to do math. I was just helping out. <laughs> I can do tens. <laughs> tens and twos and fives. Those are easy. Okay. It's the other ones. Don't let me do sevens. <laughs> we'll be here all day. Well, I think that's amazing. And her strength score has gone from the 70s when she started right. to the 200s. Nice. I mean, how inspirational is that? Yeah. It gives me hope for like, I want to stay fit and um, active as I grow older. So I would like to, I like to have these stories in my head. I feel, I find it very inspirational. So as Dr. Phil would say, I'm closer to that age than I am the other <laughs> end of my life. So that is true. Sorry. Now you're mad at me. She's like, mm, don't agree so fast. Sorry that I agreed with how math worked. <laughs> My apologies. A decade till you're 60. (laughs) (laughs) Now you're all pro math. (laughs) Moving right along. (laughs) It's uh, Latinx Heritage Month. That it is. And Tonal's had a lot of special features that they have done to celebrate, which is very cool. I wanted to point out this blog, though. Um, It features a conversation with our own Coach Pablo and with... Okay, I'm I'm not even uh, institute instituto familiar de la raza. Yes, which is and it's been like thirty years since I took a Spanish class. I think you did pretty well. I apologize if I butchered that. I'm sure we did, and I apologize (laughs) to everyone out there. Um, But I I want you guys to make sure that you get a chance to check this out because it's a really nice conversation, and it talks about 
ways that people can um, amplify voices right. um, of, of any, if anybody that might be in a minority, but specifically because it's Latin Heritage Month, then it would be for, for Latin folks. And it's all the things that this group does to help with that. So great conversation. Um, and, and I think it's worth checking out. So I wanted to make sure that awesome. we did. Checking in with the Tonal Community. So uh, joining us today via the magic of Zoom Tube is Michelle Kenyon. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. You know, it's funny. We So we've been doing the superset for a while and we have our other podcast, Pel- the Peloton podcast clip out. Yes. And, uh, and I've noticed that with the tonal interviews, there is a greater likelihood that there's a tonal behind our interviewee that they set up where you can see the tonal <laughs> as opposed to the peloton people don't do that i i'm like i don't know what that means but i find it fascinating people are very proud well, of their tonal homage there's a little homage I, to my peloton i can there. see it oh, yeah, i yeah, see yeah. it in it's the like, mirror <laughs> in the mirror I carefully yeah put it in the mirror L- mirror with a lowercase m <laughs> that's right oh, yeah. yes yes <laughs> Definitely. She's like, yes, <laughs> lowercase m. You shut your whore mouth, Tom. <laughs> and he's off to the races. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. Uh, you're officially in the interview. Awesome. That's what I do. <laughs> so, um, you know, I always like to kind of find out where people people started their their journey so how did you originally come across tonal and what made you decide this was the machine for you so i think i found tonal through like one of those targeted facebook ads because i think at the time i was think i knew i needed strength training in my life and so i'm sure i said it out loud and facebook heard me and <laughs> i saw the ad and then <laughs> i did a little research and i saw they were local to san francisco which is where i live and so i was able to one day i was having lunch with my husband and we were literally next door to the tonal showroom and i said well we should just stop in and uh you know, I did the the demo workout and I fell in love with it on the spot, but it, you know, it was pricey. And I was like, I'm not going to make this decision right now. But the way I work is once I see something I like, it like just eats at me. So I went home that night and I'm pretty sure if it wasn't that night, I ordered it online the next day. <laughs> so. so you two have a lot in common. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I shop too, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> but look she at all the great like, purchases. Uh, yes, because I was going to point out uh, great purchases. She uh, she found me online. So I did. I did. Oh. Uh, I found my husband online, so. Yeah. See? We have a lot in common. Yeah. See? <laughs> and that's how you know we're good shoppers. <laughs> mm-hmm. So far, so good. Yeah. So when when did you bring your, your tonal baby home? Uh, March of 2019. Oh, you are early in. Very early. early. Yeah. Not the earliest, but early. Yeah. yeah. Very, Very nice. Early, so. And mm-hmm. so so how has your personal fitness journey been? Like, have you always been into weights? Were weights new to you with the tonal? How did that work? So fitness is something. So let me just go back. Uh, when I was growing up, I was not athletic at all. I didn't really play sports. I just just wasn't athletically inclined. But when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I actually developed, I guess, an eating disorder. And so I was really focused on losing as much weight as possible. And, you know, just keeping to a very minimal calorie count. And part of that ended up being fitness. And so I joined gyms, and I would do cardio, and I would go around to the weight machines just to get my workout in my calorie burn in, but I really didn't have any purpose or goal other than to be small. And so, uh, you know, that went on for probably a decade. And then when I was in my early 30s, I was seeing fitness more about heart health. And my dad died when he was 40 of heart disease. I'm sorry. And so Thank you. Um, So it was really, and you know, I was getting approaching my 40s at the time. And uh, it was less about, even though there was still that component of an eating disorder never leaves. You are always have that mindset. You look at your body differently. You know, for me, if I don't work out, I go, oh my God, did I gain 10 pounds today? 
Um, so it's always that battle. And so it started to get a little healthier when I focused more on just keeping my heart healthy. And so I did a lot of spin classes at the gym, still doing a little bit of weights, but weights weren't my focus. And uh, in my late 30s, early 40s, I was working out with a personal trainer, but it's very expensive. Um, in San Francisco, the rate for a personal trainer is like $100 an hour. Ooh. So I was doing it twice a week. Yeah, yeah, I was doing it twice a week, which is not enough because I certainly wasn't motivated to go into the gym on another day and do a, a strength training session. So it was just twice a week. And it was just really hard for me to fit in. At the time, I had a really stressful career and I had a really long commute. I was commuting anywhere from two hours to four hours a day round trip. Yikes. And Whoa. so I just didn't have time to work out. Yeah. So really all I had time for was cardio because I had it at home. And so I was doing all cardio, but I saw my body starting, like, I'm getting old, right? <laughs> I'm 45 I'm, now. You're, you're not old, I was, but I understand what you mean about getting older. <laughs> things just, it, yeah, things just look different. And I think someone posted this in the Tonal Facebook the other day about a uh, Facebook group about, you know, arm exercises for triceps. And I think what made me start looking at strength training was I think I went to wave my arm and I felt it going boom, boom. And I'm like, what? <laughs> What is that? <laughs> What's that thing? Like, <laughs> Where did it come from? And why is it attached to my arm? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like I can't, I cannot, I cannot accept this. And obviously cardio is not going to fix that. And so I think that's how I ended up getting to strength training. Well, I've been doing the strength training for a while and I, I still got them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? They're still kind of there, but they're more filled out with muscle. Good. They don't, they don't move. They don't move the same. Well, so. then and the best part is, though, because of the spring strength training, if somebody says anything about it, you can punch them right in the face and yeah. you've got a lot more. There's a lot more behind it. Behind right. it. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like you've you've changed careers too in the middle of all this yeah. um and so so yeah. how are you balancing your workouts between strength and cardio well i had to, i had already ch uh changed careers by the time i got tonal oh okay. so i uh yeah i used to work in healthcare and hospital administration for 20 some years oh wow and i yeah i just i just couldn't take the stress anymore and just one day i you know, I talked to my husband about it, but I said, you know, he kept telling me, just quit, just quit. And I kept saying, I'm just going to go make a lateral move and go into another job at another hospital where I'm going to be just as miserable and stressed out and never feel like I have any time. And so I, one day I had a bad day at work and I came home and said, I'm, I'm quitting. No, tomorrow I'm quitting. And he's like, uh, I didn't mean like right <laughs> now. And I, but I'm, I was like, I have an appointment with my, I have a one-on-one -on -one with my boss and I never have those. They're like every six months. And I'm like, the time to do it is now. So, yeah. So I ended up, so I'm a photographer now. Totally, totally different, different career. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that takes some guts so, to do that. That is does. really impressive. And was it like terrifying? Yeah. Oh, I have so many questions. Yes. Also, yeah, I think so that you're terrifying. my hero for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people say that it did not feel like it at the time. And I, I did not quit to become a photographer. I okay. didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew I needed to stop for my health. And my and again, it goes back to my dad dying at such a young age. And, you know, I could be predisposed to heart disease. And I was just building myself up to a heart attack. So I just quit. And I think I needed to have some sense of purpose. And people had been telling me, why don't you try photography? You're a good photographer. I, I don't know why they said that back then, because I, I mean, I've learned so much now that <laughs> I've been professional for a couple of years. I don't know what they were thinking, but I think I had an eye. And so people said, why don't you try photography out? And they said, well, okay, let me, let me start thinking along that path. So I, I stayed home every day and I kind of, I believe like if you, uh, if you put your thought and intention into something, you can make it happen. And so I just started building my business, not actually reaching out to clients. I just started working on my website and coming up, like getting a, a CRM system in place. Like, I don't know why. I don't know where I thought I was going with this. So I spent a lot of time <laughs> doing that. If you build it, it, they will come. Right, right. And so I started, I just thought I'll give it a try. And if it doesn't work out, I can always do something else. 
and I like it. I, I mean, I love it. I do um, a lot of real estate photography. So okay. I get to go into beautiful homes here in San Francisco, see beautiful decor, beautiful architecture. And I have a flexible schedule. If I want to work, I work. Yeah. If I want to block off my calendar so I can do my tonal workout, that's what I do. And uh, so I've managed to fit my exercise into my life now, which I didn't have that flexibility before when I had a normal uh, nine to nine career. So. Well, and I will say too, like when you look at real estate uh, listings, you can tell the difference between the people that hired a professional photographer yeah. in the Midwest. We call yes. them photographers, photographers, uh, photographers, <laughs> but uh, I have to fight that. But, um, uh, but you can tell the difference between the people that hired a professional photographer and the people that like, well, I've got an iPhone. Totally. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's night and day, yeah. night and day. Yeah. And I was also thinking, I was like, my stress level decreased when you said you were a real estate photographer because my first thought is a wedding <laughs> photographer. Which well, you would think the oh, stress God. would go. Like. I, I'm like, well, how Never. is that better? It's all weekends. Oh, no, no. And yeah. I, I photographed a wedding once by accident. It was, I agreed to it. I thought it was just a portrait session and it turned into a very small, small city hall wedding but i was like never again and they were super cool super chill i i read too many stories about wedding photographers it sounds like an absolute nightmare yeah, and this, at my age i i don't need it <laughs> the stakes are so high and the emotions yeah. are so high like i so yeah. i wanted to be a dj and i was a dj for a while mm -hmm. but like a radio dj and i and i, I mm -hmm. fell into by accident like a wedding dj i did one and I was like, oh, no, not for me. Ugh. This is not the path yeah. to be a radio DJ. And I and this I do not want to eat muscatoli and t have people do the duck dance. This is not <laughs> my thing. So, again, Midwest. Right. That's right. What our weddings look like, <laughs> that so. is that is yeah. that's very. Yeah, that's Missouri for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, OK, so you changed you changed careers. That's amazing. And maybe offline I can pick your brain about that because I've got lots of thoughts about that um <laughs> i don't uh -oh. want to i don't want to stress tom out by yeah. asking you too many questions <laughs> don't do the quitting before you have a plan thing though how about that yeah yeah, yeah. Like. yeah that's hard that's hard <laughs> um, but um but like how so i know i know i've I've seen you around in the Peloton world for a long time. I mean, our names have we've 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 ridden together. We've been on leaderboards yeah. together. So I, I've known your name. And um and whenever I came over to Tonal, I was so so happy and surprised to see you there. You know, it's like it's so great seeing Peloton people over yeah. in the Tonal world. Yes, yes. But like, yeah. I, don't you think it's hard to find a good rhythm of like moving back and forth between strength and cardio? I did it first, so. I, again, my mindset with exercise and fitness was pretty screwed up and it was really not for getting, you know, you know, sculpting my body or getting in shape. It was really just, I ate this, I need to burn this off. Um, and then that also that component, like I gotta, gotta do cardio because I don't want to die. And, uh, so when I first got tonal, first of all, I was, it was the hardest workout ever that initial strength assessment i wanted to barf and i'm like wow i am so weak <laughs> what have i done <laughs> yeah what have i done and you know it was weird coming from a cardio world and you know and it was also it, even though i was used to working out with a personal trainer it was different right it was on my wall and i couldn't like make jokes with them and like i couldn't complain i mean i could but no one listened you know <laughs> we still have to do the workout that might be for the best um, <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah my poor uh real life personal trainer always had to hear that um and then I, I was still trying to do my old Peloton schedule with it. So I was, I introduced, you know, three to four at the time. I think I was doing three to four uh, days a week of tonal strength training. And then I was like throwing on another four or five, maybe Peloton rides. And I, 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 I was exhausted. Yeah. I was like, I don't think this is the right combination for my body. And my former personal trainer used to always tell me I did not need so much cardio. You know, when I always complimented her body shape, she's like, strength training, strength training, and a little bit of cardio. 
So that was hard for me. I was like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, What's going to happen to my heart? Am I going to like gain 400 pounds? You know, I I was like, I don't want to be a big muscle bound woman. Like that was never the vision I had for myself. So I was, I I just decided to start experimenting with it. And I started reducing my, my cycling schedule and nothing bad happened. (laughs) I still, you know, look the same. And, you know, I was not exhausted anymore. And I had more strength. uh, I had more energy to do the strength training. And, uh, you know, I just ended up like, well, now, now I always follow the total schedule. So whatever program I'm in, I like to do four to five days a week of strength training. So I usually pick a four day a week uh, tonal program because I like the upper lower body splits. I don't like to work out my full body at once. It's, it is exhausting. And then I sprinkle in Peloton around it. So if I do an upper body workout and I have time and I feel good enough, I'll do a ride, but like 20 minutes because I got that from when I did Nicolette's Better Break in Tread. She always followed it up with like a maximum of a 20 minute hit ride. And so now that's what I do. It's very rare for me to do like a long cardio session at this point. And I feel much better and i love what strength training has done for my body like yeah i don't have that jiggle in my arm anymore and like you know i noticed i think when i fell in love with tonal it it was not the day i bought it and it was not the first month i think it was like three months in and you know i I don't know if i was just driving in the car or something and i brushed up against my own own arm and i'm like what's that (laughs) like i was like i've got a bicep (laughs) It was amazing. And then I was like, I came home. I'm like, I go to my husband. I go, feel this. Feel what I've got. And, you know, he went, oh, oh, okay. And from there, I became obsessed. I was like, if I could do that, like, you know, I could totally reshape myself. I'm never going to be that skinny little girl I used to be because I have to starve myself to get there or do, like, so much cardio. It's, It's ridiculous. Well, why don't I take what I have, which is not bad for 45, And like, just try to change it a little bit. And so that's what I've been really focusing on. So I like, I love doing now the hypertrophy programs. Like I did Jackson's muscle building burnout. And I like could not believe what my biceps look like after I did that. I was like, this is great. So um, so that's really my motivation. For people who don't know, hypertrophy is that's like when you want to focus on actually building the muscle, right? Growing it. Yeah. Okay. Making it big which sounds scary right like who wants to grow bigger muscles but w- women yes i should say what they don't really want to grow bigger muscles but then they want that toned look but like the only way to look toned is to actually get a bigger muscle so it's really important to do those types of programs and you know lift heavy so now i'm obsessed with my strength score like my strength score has grown 320 six percent or something like that since wow. i wow started using tonal and it's like yeah yeah that's so incredible that so now that's just my thing carrying that i was ca- weak carrying was that really camera weak. equipment is getting a lot easier <laughs> it has it has i still complain about it though well, sure. <laughs> just for old time's sake you know <laughs> So, do you ever? I come home from work and with my fifty-pound bag, and I still ask my husband, "Can you get this for me?" And my strength score is higher than my husband's too. Congratulations! (laughs) That's awesome. I'm sure you never let him hear the end of that. (laughs) We often talk about it. (laughs) We or you? (laughs) I. I'm thinking he occasionally asks me where I am. Yeah. Yeah. We're close. We're that, close. That means his yeah. went up and he's like, Ooh, did I did no. I did I beat you? Oh wah, wah. did I get close to Michelle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Did that you, is really something to be proud that's of. That's what you should tell him the next time you have him bringing in your camera equipment is that <laughs> you're just trying to help his strength score. <laughs> It's, right, yeah. right. It's really for his own good. <laughs> right. You should be thanking me, really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, true. So, so with you, you know, working out differently and and working out. I mean, you still work out a lot. Do you ever? Do you ever feel like, oh, I'm really not motivated to work out today? And yes. A lot of times. <laughs> She's like, yes, I am a human woman. Yes. And not, yes. Should, I should say human being because that's not specific to women. It's definitely not. But yeah. how do you overcome it? Yeah. Like what, what kind of, 
what do you what do you tell yourself or what do you do to just get past it? Well, I think having the programs really helps me. It's very structured and I like get a little obsessive about like, you know, I like to start a program on a Monday. I like to finish up by a Friday. So I start thinking about timelines in my head. Well, if I skip it today, why am I skipping it? Is it because my body really needs rest? Or is it just because I really don't feel like doing it? I felt like that a lot during go big or go home. Like I had to like talk myself into it, like get over there and just get it done. And like, it was always about getting it done because then I'm one workout away, like one workout closer to being done. So that's how I motivate myself. And then dumb things like I have a virtual workout partner. I, I think I post about it in the group sometimes. Her name's Tori. She lives in Florida. I don't know her. We never met before. We met through Tonal. And one time, like months and months ago, she, I must have posted about starting a program and she wanted to start it too. And since then, we message each other every day and we do programs together. Yesterday, she dared me to do my last two workouts of dead on deadlift. And so whenever someone challenges me to something like that, for some reason, that's motivation. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do it. And I did. I felt like crap, <laughs> but I finished it. I finished my whole program, which was nice. So today I got to have a nice recovery day. So you did both back to back? Yeah. Yeah. Oof. I've done that before. Sometimes like sometimes I'll uh, accelerate the program schedule to get done in time for travel. Well, when I used to travel, um, yeah. so I could when, get done in time. When that was allowed. Trip, I don't like to... <laughs> Yeah. So I, I, I don't like to split up my program. Like I don't like to take a week vacation in the middle of it because then I, I personally feel like then I'm losing some of the benefit of the program structure itself. So I, I always that. try to get it done. I get that. I feel like you're probably yeah. not, but I also get it. Like, yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Probably I agree with not. Both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I agree with both of those statements. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it sounds like you do a lot of programs. Like, do you have a, a preferred one or a favorite one? Uh, favorite program that you've done that sticks love, out or it's funny i've loved loved every program i've done um i think i've only done 13 at this point because of my well, i used to travel a lot um, so again i don't like to break it up <laughs> um only 13 i think right now i'm still like i always refer back to muscle building burnout because i think i saw a lot of muscle definition with a very uh, much shorter workout time the workouts were only 30 minutes or so and it felt really like I didn't feel exhausted at the end. I felt like I, I could do more cardio in that uh, program than I can in some of the other ones. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that one. And I think I might do it again uh, next week. Day three really, really hurts. I really <laughs> like. I, oh, yeah. I agree with you. I, I mean, I love the program. It is so effective. But I you were talking about go big or ho go home. And I felt like muscle burning build out or whatever it that that every single week when I would get to day three because the first week was so hard I had to talk myself into it every week after that even though it got easier I can't yeah. like it was like a mental block and I would be like oh it's gonna hurt and I don't wanna <laughs> yeah so what's day three yeah. what, what's it's happening on day week. three <laughs> It's, you um, can't sit on the toilet afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> it's like there's goblets. <laughs> it's that painful. <laughs> it is that painful that first week because there's goblet squats. Goblet squats. And then there's... I think um, there's like 20 of them. 15 yeah, or 15, 20 goblet squats. 15 yeah. goblet squats and then rear deadlifts. Uh, 15 on each leg and then um, there's also uh, you remember all this wow I just got she done I, I just I just <laughs> finished the program last week so yeah and then oh, yeah. and then you also had to do um, on 15 on each leg of the rear uh, rear lunge like weighted lunge uh, what do you reverse goblet lunge that's the one yeah. I that don't always remember the names I hate those oh my god and then you also had to do uh like neutral deadlifts right before you did those so whoo yeah. yeah 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 it was rough yeah but go big or go home had those barbell front squats I can't stand those yeah I agree yeah, with that those too were tough. I need shoulder pads for those <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not built right something's wrong I don't have those little divots that the bar are supposed to go into I think they're there it's just trying to figure out how to hold the thing the right <laughs> I think I think my muscles have grown over it that's the problem I have muscle growth they don't warn you about that part. No, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
you're funny. <laughs> and for anybody who's curious, that is uh, one of Coach Jackson's uh, programs, the uh, Muscle Building Burnout. And it is an excellent program. I absolutely agree with you. And I did like the short time frames of it. Um, it's just mm-hmm. that day three, that day three was traumatic for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, any, in any program leg day, once you start, the thing is the tonal AI, I think is really conservative in the beginning, or, you know, it could be conservative. And then, you know, the incremental weight adjustment is really small. It's incremental. Right. And so I think I just accepted what tonal gave me for like the first eight months. And I was like, yeah, this is hard. But then I really thought about, it. I'm like, am I really challenged? Am I like, am I dying at the end of that set? And I wasn't. So I started manually increasing weights until I could, it was challenging and still keeping proper, proper form. And so now I find any, any program I do, whatever the, you know, the advanced, intermediate, beginner, whatever it's rated, it's hard because my weight challenged me at this point. And the lower body days on all of them are and what's, hate, dead on deadlift is two days of lower body. <laughs> and, and, and you probably won't want to do that one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know that I do right now. I'm just, I need to I have to see I have to talk myself back into it. You know, I'm going to I think my next mm-hmm. one is going to be uh, the coach Pablo. Um, the one that's like the it's not radical body rock it's like radical muscle or muscle rock yes yes i think yeah. i'm gonna try that next i'm planning on doing that yep mm-hmm. yeah i'm probably i i have so i have three weeks before I, I am going out of town for a week so after i come back i'm gonna start that program okay mm-hmm. all right so do you have any advice for people that are just getting a tonal so um i think for people that are new to strength training which i was uh i consider myself new to strength training when I joined Tonal. I think just be patient. Uh, First of all, the machine itself can be overwhelming at first. You know, I know I was terrified to like move the arms around and break it. And so I took extra care to move things around. And, you know, so I think a lot of people think that the machine itself can be cumbersome in the beginning. And, you know, I know they just uh, updated the software to now show you where the arms should go. But you eventually that just becomes second second major you walk over the machine you know ahead of time where to put things and uh so i think just be patient and also be patient with yourself and i think for women don't be afraid to lift heavy it's good for you and you know it helps increase your metabolism it helps you get that tone look don't be afraid of it you're not gonna end up like arnold schwarzenegger so (laughs) well it's not it's also it's it's not like if you do two workouts you suddenly look like arnold schwarzenegger like if if it was that easy everybody would everybody would like it you're gonna you'll (laughs) you'll you'll spot that and you can adjust and it takes a long time to actually build muscle like a long time i don't think people really realize that and it's it's very sad how much I'm realizing that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. But it's it's. But I mean, it it does happen. It's not dramatic and overnight. Like I wish it was. It's taken me, you know, a year and a half now to notice like increased definition. And I'm not a fitness model. I wish I was, but I'm just happy with where I am now. And it'll keep getting better if you keep doing it. That's awesome. Very Absolutely. good advice. So I guess before we let you go, uh, where can people find you on social media if you would like to be found? Uh, my Instagram is Michelle Kenyon photo. And uh, yeah, that's really my only social media. <laughs> I mean, Facebook as well. Michelle Kenyon Young. So, <laughs> And uh, do you have a, a name on the tonal leaderboard that people can look you up by? It's so boring, but it's just Michelle because someone said, hey, Hey, you should grab like the, you know, the OG name. Yeah. So just be plain old Michelle. So that way one day when there's millions of users, I'll just be Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's great. That's um, no, that's yeah. I would do the same thing. Like if Gmail started over, I'd be like, Tom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom at Gmail. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking time exactly. out of your day to join us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to have had this opportunity. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's been a lot of fun. And um, and I'll keep in contact with you and let you know all the steps as we move forward, too. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You have a good rest of your day and your weekend. You too. Bye. Bye. 
So I guess that brings this episode to a close. Yes. Uh, what pray tell do you have in store for people next time? Uh, next next time we are going to talk to India Ashwani, who will talk to us about how she has used exercise, specifically tonal, to help her with um, her disorders of post traumatic stress disorder okay. and how she's dealt with like anxiety and how much it's helped her. Um, I think it's a really powerful thing to talk about, and I think that any way that we can help people find reason i mean exercise doesn't just help you get stronger outside it helps you get stronger inside and it helps you be able to deal with things so um i think it's going to be a very powerful conversation and i'm super excited to have it awesome well until then where can people find you people can find me at facebook.com slash crystal d o'keefe and they can find me on twitter and instagram at clip out crystal and you can find me on twitter at roger kubert or on facebook at facebook.com slash tom o'keefe you can find the show online at facebook.com slash superset podcast and remember wherever you're getting your podcast from be sure and subscribe so you never miss an episode so that's it for this one thanks for tuning in and until next time keep lifting The Superset is made possible in part by support from Tonal.